Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the term magnetic flux, flux linkage, and the magnetic flux density. And looking at the formula phi is equal to BA, where phi represents the flux, B represents the magnetic flux density, and A represents the area. So, first of all, let's start talking about magnetic flux. So, what exactly is magnetic flux? Okay, so over the years of teaching, um, it's been quite difficult for me to try and explain the magnetic flux. But let's just say right now we have a bar magnet over here. So here's my bar magnet. It's a north and south. We should hopefully remember that the field lines go out to the north on um, this side over here and into the south over here. Then obviously we have the field lines like this going round over here. There we go, round in this case over here. Okay, so hopefully we are familiar with this diagram, but what happens if the field is going into the page here? Hopefully we can remember that. To represent the field going into the page, I'm gonna use the cross, everyone, yes, the cross. So this represents the magnetic field going into the page here. Each of these crosses, one, two, three, four, five, six, they represent the lines, yes? So that, that's one line, that's two lines, that's three, four, five, six. The idea of flux and magnetic flux, the best way I like to talk about it, it's simply the number of lines. So in simple terms, guys, the magnetic flux is the number of lines. Okay, so it's the number of lines. It's inverted commas, that's the simple idea that I use to try and explain it. Um, and the symbol for flux from now on, we're going to represent it by the symbol phi. So phi represents the flux over here. Okay. And flux is measured in Weber, so the units are going to be in Weber. So this, the units are going to be Weber, capital W, lowercase b, Weber here. So in this example over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines here. So I'm going to say that it's going to be six Weber. Easy stuff. So look, yes, I'm just counting the number of lines here. So the idea of magnetic flux is simply the number of lines. We've got the symbol of phi that represents the flux, and the units are going to be Weber. I have six uh, Weber here because there's one, two, three, four, five, six lines here. Easy stuff. Okay, now from here we're going to move on to another term. That term is going to be the magnetic flux linkage. Okay, so the term magnetic flux linkage, this is slightly different. So um, let's say we've got the field going into the page once again, yes, into the board once again. And this time, everyone, we're going to drop a square coil. So imagine a coil which is square. We're going to drop it into here. So let's say right now uh, we drop the square coil into here right now. First question is going to be, what's the flux going through it? Well, the flux is simply going to be the number of lines. So we're going to put that, guys, it's the number of lines over here going through it. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four. We know that the flux is going to be four Weber over here. Four Weber is going to be the flux, one, two, three, four. So flux is going to be equal to 4 Weber, easy stuff here. So with that square wire, we're getting 4 Weber. But what happens now if I was to put on top of that, so imagine we put one square. If I put another square right on top, guys, right on top of it, so I'll draw it as if it's here. There we go. Uh, right on top of it, of equal size onto it. So we've got two of them now. So we're going to take, put down a number, n is equal to 2 right now. What is the total flux? What would be the total flux going through it? Well, this is the term flux linkage. So, so flux linkage is basically going to be the total flux, everyone. It's going to be the total flux passing through it. Okay, right, so we know it's going to be the total flux. So for one square, we ended up with going to be four Weber passing through it. But now I've got two, what's the total flux? Don't think too much. It's simply going to be eight Weber. So the total flux is going to be 8 Weber. So the formula to work this out for the total flux is going to be n times by phi. Everyone happy, yes? And where n is going to be the number of coils. So n is going to be the number of coils here. Phi. So the total flux, which is the flux linkage, will be given by the formula n phi. And obviously it's going to be uh, how many actual loops you actually have on this. So obviously I had two, that's why I took n is going to be two here. So that's the reason why this is obviously going to be equal to n times by phi. We knew that n was two from before, so n was equal to two, and times it by the phi, phi which was obviously going to be four Weber, hence why it is eight Weber over here. So there we go guys, we can then calculate it, n phi for this is going to be eight Weber. 
So flux linkage is simply going to be the total flux, which will be given by M phi. Okay, now from here, we're going to move on to another term, guys. It's going to be the magnetic flux density. Okay, right, to explain this concept, I've got two fields now, yes? Okay, they're both going into the board right now, and we're going to do the following. We're going to drop a square coil into each one. So once again, we're going to drop a square coil into which, each one over here. Here's the first one, and it's of equal size into the other one, yes? So I'm going to draw it roughly the same size over here. There we go. Hopefully it's the same size here. Right, simple question then. Which one do you think has the greatest amount of flux density. Which one is it? A or B? Well, hopefully you have an idea that density is going to be equal to like something divided by an area of volume. Yes, that's the idea of density over here. Well, it's the same thing in magnetic fields. We can define the magnetic flux density, which is going to be called B. The magnetic flux density is equal to the number of lines that you have. So we're going to say it's going to be the amount of flux that you have divided by the area. So obviously it's the area of this, the area of the square. So divided by the area over here. So the magnetic flux density is simply defined as the flux per unit area. So logically, hopefully you looked at both these diagrams and recognized, okay, the second one has this greater magnetic flux density over here. So this one has a higher magnetic flux density. Okay, so we've got this down right now. And obviously from here we're going to move on to symbols, so magnetic flux density, hopefully we've come across it previously in the topic, especially the left-hand rule. Uh, B is with the magnetic flux density, the flux is going to remain as phi, everyone, and the area divided by the area as normal here. Uh, then we're going for magnetic flux density, the units of this is going to be Tesla, and phi is going to be, um, which we said earlier on, which is going to be Weber, and the area is going to be in meters squared, everyone. Okay, so we've defined three different quantities. Let's have a quick recap before we move on. Number one, magnetic flux was simply the number of lines. Yes, the number of lines over here. I've got six lines into the board, hence I put down six Weber. The symbol for flux is phi, and the units are going to be Weber. Then scrolling down, the term flux linkage. The flux linkage simply means the total amount of flux. If I had multiple loops, let's say I put a, a loop and I put another loop into that field, one on top of the other, it'll be the total amount of flux that's going through it. You can say it's like threading it. Imagine that's the hole of a needle and you're threading it, guys, so the flux lines are almost threading it. That's a nice way to visualize it. We know that the total flux will be equal to the number of uh, squares that you have, or the number of turns, times by the flux of one of them. So therefore, N phi is going to be the total flux over here. Easy stuff. And finally, we defined magnetic flux density. Well, I gave you the scenario, if we have two fields, we, we clearly know that this one has a greater density of field lines. We can define the magnetic flux density by being the flux divided by the unit area. B is equal to phi divided by A over here. Where B is measured in Tesla, the flux is measured in Weber, and the area is meters squared. Okay, so question time. A magnet with a pole face of 0.02 meters times by 0.01 meters has a flux density of 80 mini tesla going through it. Calculate the flux which leaves the pole face. Right, we can use our following formula then. We know that phi is equal to b times by a over here. So we can use the following formula, phi is equal to b times by a, and we can plug the numbers in then. So therefore phi is equal to 18, but it, look, it's in millitesla, 18 times by 10 to the minus 3 tesla, times by the area. The area that we've got is 0.02 meters times by 0.01 meters over here. And look, close the bracket, um, and therefore we can work out the flux to be 3.6 times by 10 to the minus 6 Weber, everyone. Don't forget the units of Weber. Easy stuff, everyone. And that's it for another session of Surrounded Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going. And good luck in your academic studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.